Recognizing the need to address this issue of balance, the Korean government has recently stepped up its efforts to establish a more reciprocal relations between Korea and the United States. Especially, Korea is strongly determined to expand the scope of contribution to the international peace and stability, as demonstrated by the dispatch of Korean troops to Afghanistan and also a substantial increase of participation in the United Nations peacekeeping forces. By doing so, Korean government expects to share with the U.S. government the burden of preserving international peace and order. Secondly, we need to recognize that the Korea-U.S. relations have been overly focused on political or military affairs. Looking back on my some 15 years' experience in taking care of American affairs in the foreign ministry, I cannot deny that most of the things I have, I have done were related to political or military affairs. In some sense, it is understandable, considering that there have been so many homemade, hot homemade issues that needed to be immediately taken care of. Nevertheless, we cannot say uh, such homemade oriented relations are always desirable. Now we need to expand the scope of the relations, which includes not just politics and security, but also economy, culture, and human exchanges, and other areas altogether. By doing so, we may be able to establish really solid, durable, healthy, unshakable bilateral relations. The Korea-U.S. free trade agreement could be a wonderful framework to achieve such a comprehensive relationship between our two countries. By increasing the volume of the trade and other economic transactions, the two economies would be inexorably intertwined. Many people express concern that the rising of China would inevitably lead to the disengagement of the United States from East Asia, especially from Korean, Korean Peninsula in the future. However, we may not need to worry about such a scenario if Korea and the United States could achieve a strong economic integration based on the free trade agreement. So, my conclusion on the desirable path for the Korea-U.S. relations is to build up more reciprocal and more comprehensive alliance. And fortunately, the two governments are actually moving in that direction. But it is important to note that strong support from the grassroots is indispensable for the successful completion of this task. Most of all, American people need to enhance their understanding on things about Korea and on the importance of developing the Korea-U.S. alliance into a new desirable direction, as I have just described as well. And when I say enhancing the understanding on things about Korea, I say this in a very broad context that includes culture, history, economy, and politics. But in particular, I meant enhancing the understanding of where South Korea stands in terms of issues with North Korea. As you all know, the South has been divided from the North for over 60 years now. A peaceful unification is perhaps the most important issue on our national agenda. And without a doubt, one of the key players in achieving a peaceful unification will be the United States. To the Korean government and the Korean people, the issue of North Korea is very significant and very personal. It penetrates all levels of society and government. However, to the United States, the issue of North Korea is just one of many international security issues. Sometimes it does not carry much weight in the midst of many issues, important issues in the Middle East, Cuba, and Iran. And minimizing this difference in perspective is what I sincerely hope will be achieved when more American pe people increase their understanding of Korea. In this context, I believe today's event is so meaningful and productive 
as a representative of the Korean government in this region. I'm so eager to make my best efforts to create as many opportunities of this kind as possible. Thank you very much.